بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وأعز المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المنتجبين واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين آمين رب العالمين in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, all praises be to Him. Everlasting and omniscient He is, we begin in His name. We send our peace and blessings upon Muhammad and his holy household in our everlasting dominations upon the enemies of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Amin Rabbal Alameen. My dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I begin by sending my peace and my blessings upon you and congratulate you on the arrival of the month of Allah, the month of Ramadan, the month of forgiveness, the month of mercy, the month of prayer, the month of repentance. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy befall those who are not able to join us during these sacred nights. My dear brothers and sisters, thank you for joining me. As we discuss, inshallah, during the next nights or the next couple of weeks, inshallah, the sermon of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, which he delivered in the final days of Sha'ban, that marks the beginning, marking the beginning, sorry, of the month of Ramadan. This sermon, my dear brothers and sisters, and I chose this because this sermon of Rasulullah, this khutbah of Rasulullah, encompasses several and several merits of this sacred month. I found it that it is very important that we focus on the merits and then focus in more detail on the specific lines and the specific words uttered by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the main reason by the way somebody may ask me what is the reason behind this commentary behind this brief commentary I, I consider it a brief commentary all in all I won't be able to completely and holistically explain and go over the khutbah of Rasulullah Understanding the words of Rasulullah is not something that I am capable of even beginning to fathom and understand. I am merely able to bring you, inshallah, me and myself, myself first and first, first and foremost, and you closer to the truth, inshallah. And the reason, again, the reason behind me doing this stems from a hadith of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. You see... My dear brothers and sisters, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam in a hadith that has been narrated, it is very well known. He mentions and he says, Al-Tadabbur fi hadith afdalu min ibadati alfi sana. Tadabbur. By tadabbur we mean contemplation. By tadabbur we mean to ponder, to think, to begin, to look at the hadith, not in a superficial understanding. لا تقرأ الحديث بقراءة سطحية, as we say. لا تقرأه بقراءة سطحية. Do not read it. Don't look at the, the first layer of the hadith. The same way when it comes to the Qur'an al-Hakim. Do not look at the Qur'an and do not read at the Qur'an as having one layer. Even the ahadith of the Rasulullah are very deep as well. The Qur'an tells us that the Prophet speaks out of revelation. The Prophet speaks out of guidance from the Almighty. The Prophet does not speak out of his own hawa, out of his own inclination towards the dunya and towards his love to the dunya or so on and so forth. The Prophet in fact has no love for the dunya. The Prophet is a messenger of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi has a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 24-7. That is our belief in the Prophet in the same way with the Imams alayhi wa salam. But they receive, when they receive guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the methodology is different. One of them, the Prophet, receives it through Gabriel. Whereas our hadith tell us that the Imams alayhum as receive it as a sound 
or as a revelation in their heart, they hear a sound, or they hear a sound in their ears, or something in their heart moves, and they are able to get answers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the end of the day, this is the Shia belief. The Shia belief is that the Imams alayhum salam are divinely guided and divinely appointed. So when it comes to the Quran, when it comes to the Sunnah, the Imam says, the Imam says to do tadabbur contemplation upon a hadith, my dear brothers and sisters, is better than a thousand years of worship. Why? When you begin to comprehend and dive deeper into your own aqa'id, into your own beliefs, for example, and you establish a closer connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of this journey, your reward first and foremost will be multiplied. And that thirst for knowledge and that pleasure will also increase. Right? Think of it as somebody who gets up and goes to prayer for the sake of prayer. He's doing his obligation. He goes to pray for the sake of prayer. Whereas somebody who goes to prayer for the sake of his love and desire to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at this scenario as well. Somebody who his love, he has love towards his parents. He has been taught to love his parents. She has been taught to love her parents. But another individual that loves his, his parents she loves her parents for example but the driving force behind this love is out of compassion and love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have dove so deep and they've understood that in order to be a true muttaqi a true mukhlas a true devout and pious person that in order for me to reach that stage of piety and devoutness, I have to reach a closer understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the same comes with the Imams alayhum salam. And for example, you know, the conditions of ziyara. The conditions of ziyara inform us that if you wish to retain, attain the reward of ziyara, you have to have ma'rifa of the Imam. Sometimes you have adna al-ma'rifah, the least ma'rifah that you need. But it doesn't mean that you cannot climb the ladder and attain more and more knowledge. Correct? So it is from this bab, we say. It is from this angle we thought, you know what? We chose the prophetic sermon of Rasulullah. The prophetic sermon which encompasses so many merits of the month of Ramadan. And from the hadith of the Imam alayhi salam, tadabbur fil hadith, I thought to myself, we thought to ourselves, the best way I can give back to the believers is I, first of all, work on myself and try to gather the resources and then present them to you. I thought to myself, what is the best way for people to connect in Shahar Ramadan? other than in with the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi or the hadith of Al-Muhammad. But since the, the sermon of Rasulullah encompasses so many teachings, I thought to myself, well, why not we just go through the sermon of Rasulullah? We go through it line by line and we analyze it line by line. We give evidence towards it and so on and so forth. All from the angle of tadabbur fil hadith in order that we reach a closer understanding of some of these words. And we'll also see how this sermon of Rasulullah itself, if you wished right now, if you wish to, to sit down and dissect it, you are able to find narrations in our books and in Quranic texts concerning every single parts or every single merit which the Prophet mentioned this is very important for you to have always always read when you're reading always try to see has the Imam said this elsewhere can I find this instance in the Holy Quran or we'll see for example when the Prophet says Ya people why is he speaking to the people what does that mean the people is it the people of Medina? Is it the people of Mecca? Is it people, all the people around him? Or is that people a khitab? 
is that people a an address to all of mankind right we see this in the Quran this instance and we will talk about this inshallah about the use and the and the use of Rasulullah using the word O oh, people in this khutbah because he begins it. he begins the khutbah by saying nas qad aqbala ilaykum the prophet is talking to all of us and we'll see how and why, why this is important inshallah let us send the salawat upon muhammad and ali muhammad allahumma salli ala muhammad muhammad inshallah allahumma salli ala muhammad and ali muhammad so we can inshallah begin we can take that as your introduction inshallah that the backbone behind this discussion is the hadith of imam al-sadiq alayhi salam al-tadabbur أفضل من عبادة ألف سنة. Contemplation in one hadith is better than a thousand years of worship. Now, even this hadith itself, if we wish to comp, it's not sorry, now comp, but if we wish to go into it in detail, we will find why it's important, and you'll see, you also see in the Quran why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala informs us that do they not do tadabbur, or is there upon their hearts? A lock, a qufl, ala qulubihim aqfaluha. It's very important, very, very important. And we'll see how important it is to just stop for a moment and ask yourself, why was this said? That's all it takes, by the way. All it takes is for you to take the Quran, open the Quran, and then begin to say to yourself, Ya ayyuhan nas, inna khalaqnakum. Ya ayyuhan nas, u'budu rabbakum. Ya ayyuhan nas, attaqullah. And so on. You open the Quran and you see, okay, more than 15, 20 times, and we'll, I said we'll make, we'll, we'll talk about this inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the people through the tongue of the Prophet. You know, why? Why is that the case? Right? For, for example, you go to the ayah in the Quran which says, Inna arsalnaka rahmatan lil alameen. We have sent you, O Muhammad ibn Abdullah, O Rasulullah, a mercy to mankind. Then you'll see, you'll see that Islam, in its essence, is in tune with humanity and with nature and parallel with the human rights that everybody is equal everybody is created from one nafs min nafsin wahida and we are all equal in humanity and you learn this is this is how you begin to truly comprehend the magnitude that is islam you truly tr comprehend the messages the rasail of the prophets and messengers all 124000 Prophets and messengers and awsiya. So let us begin, inshallah. We said this khutbah. So, a little bit background of the khutbah, and this will be the introduction. This consider this the introduction, inshallah. In the following episode, inshallah, we'll begin with the first line of the khutbah, inshallah. The khutbah itself. The khutbah itself, my dear brothers and sisters, the khutbah itself is found narrated in the Amali of Shaykh al saduq And as well, it is found, narrated as well, in the Ayun Akhbar Rida of Shaykh al saduq And as well, it's found narrated in many other publications, in many other books. And if you just go back to the books of Hadith, and go back to the books when where the scholars, for example, have added the Fadail and the merits of Shah Ramadan, you will find this khutb. My dear brothers and sisters, the khutbah is reported, and let me read to you for the sake of this discussion, of course. So you have, an, so you have, inshallah, I recommend, of course, that you try your best to take down whatever notes you find that are beneficial to you, inshallah. The source of the hadith, again, found in Shaykh al Saduq's Amali, the Amali of Shaykh al Saduq. Unfortunately, I forgot to actually write down the exact page number here, but of course, I'll give you another reference for the hadith insha'Allah later but to quickly read the Senate of the hadith 
as well for the sake of our discussion it's important that we cover everything because our, we are doing this brief commentary on this hadith and it's important to go through the hadith holistically as best as we can Sheikh al-Saduq reports it from Muhammad ibn Ibrahim he says the hadith is, is yeah, from Muhammad ibn Ibrahim rahmatullahi alayhi he says narrated to me from who? from Ahmad ibn Muhammad al-Hamadani from who? from Ali ibn al-Hasan ibn Ali ibn Faddal from his father meaning al-Hasan ibn Ali ibn Faddal he ibn Faddal reports it from who? from Ali ibn Musa al-Rida alayhi salam and Ali ibn Musa al-Rida alayhi salam reports it from who? from his father Musa ibn Ja'far and al-Kadhim peace be upon him alayhi salam and Musa al-Kadhim reports it from Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam and Ja'far al-Sadiq reports it from who? from Muhammad al-Baqir alayhi salam and Muhammad al-Baqir reports it from his father Ali, Ali ibn al-Husayn al-Sajjad Zayn al-Abidin alayhi salam and Imam Zayn al-Abidin reports it from his father al-Husayn al-Shaheed Imam Hussein ibn Ali, the martyr, the prince of martyr, the hadith says the, from his father, the prince of martyr, Hussein ibn Ali, peace be upon him, from his father, the master of the awsiya, of the patrons, the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, he said, from Amir al-Mumineen alayhi salam, Ali ibn Abi Talib, the commander of the faithful, he said, Imam Ali alayhi salam is the one who reports to us the sermon of Rasulullah, and he says to us, he says, عن أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب قال إن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله خطبنا ذات يوم فقال he says and then one one day the Sula Allah peace and blessings be upon him the messenger of Allah came and delivered to us the follow the following sermon and he said and then of course the sermon at its entirety is narrated. Now going back to maybe somebody might want to ask, okay, then what is the grading of the hadith chain of transmission? Though it's important to understand, my dear brothers and sisters, that it's not always the chain of transmission. But of course, for the sake of the argument, inshallah, if you go back to the book and Mosu'at Ahadith Ahl al Bayt, Sheikh Hadi al Najafi, volume 4, page 269, Sheikh Hadi al Najafi says, in conclusion, this report is mu'tabar. Uh, the report from a Senate standpoint has no problem. And again, in volume 6, page 249, he reports it from Ayyun Akhbar Rida and he also says it's mu'tabar. Mu'tabar meaning the Senate is reliable. Though at the end of the day here, we will be focusing and we will see, by the way, we will see that not just that it's mu'tabar, that every single line of Rasulullah, every single line uttered by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, can be proved from the ahadith and from the Quran, from the Quran, from the Sunnah, which is why it's not always that we play this, not play this game. Sorry, that's probably the, the incorrect way of looking at it. But we have this problem in our communities where people always say, "Well, what is this chain? The chain is daif. The chain is." That's not how it works, by the way. Our ulama, that's not how they deal with these. With with when it's not how they discuss these matters, especially when it comes to. To matters of belief, for example, or matters of fada'il. There is a different approach for everything. I suggest that before people jump to conclusions, they either have a background, or when they jump to conclusions, they are jumping in order, not jumping to conclusions, but in order for them, if they wish to find the truth, it's good to ask, by the way. But there are those people who are arrogant, so no matter what, they're asking for the sake of bittering, or the sake of bickering. The state of co the, the, for the sake of causing disunity between the Shia, for example. But if you're asking and you wish to learn, then it's fine. It's good to learn. But don't have that mentality. Ah, da'if. Ah, sahih. Ah. That's not how it works, my dear brothers and sisters. Our ulama, that's not how it works. There are shara'at. There are conditions to the hadith that is accepted. I suggest, inshallah, that if you wish to learn these conditions and if you wish to know how this how, how the science works, you go study, inshallah. You know? The books are there, inshallah. Focus on the Arabic, inshallah. Hone your Arabic skills, bi idnillah ta'ala. And then go read the many, there are many simple uh, um, introductory books of Rajal. Sheikh Ja'far al-Subhani, for example, has a beautiful book on the introduction of Rajal. And I suggest all of you to go back, if you have time, of course. And I believe this book itself is translated in English as well. 
So I do, I do, I do recommend that if you have the time to review these matters. But don't just come across something because your mind cannot comprehend it, for example, or you think it's too far-fetched, or right away you say, oh, this is weak, you know. We will s and you will s we will see the, the reason also, one of the main reasons that we're discussing this khutbah is to show you that the hadith is mu'tabar, yes. So the hadith means, the mean, meaning the, the senate, sorry. The senate of the hadith is reliable. But the senate is not sahih. It's not authentic. It's mu'tabar. But you'll find that everything that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said in his sermon can be traced back to the Qur'an and to the Sunnah. That is why it's very important when you read the Ahadith, you have a more holistic reading into the Majama' al ahadithiyah into all the Majama', into the encyclopedias and into the many Ahadith. My, my, if there's one thing I wished, if there's one thing I wish for their brothers and sisters to take as, as, as um, a practice in Shah Ramadan, is to go back to the books of hadith and read insha'Allah and then just try to energize yourself with the ahadith of al-Muhammad insha'Allah sallu ala muhammadin wa ali muhammad from from this of course probably will end the first episode and hopefully we will continue the next episode insha'Allah later but again to go back to the main points discussed here my dear brothers and sisters the angle and the foundation behind uh, discussing the khutbah of Rasulullah all begins, uh, all began with the hadith of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam and the Quran and the many narrations and the Quranic texts that inform us the importance of contemplation and the importance of seeking knowledge and the importance of not just reading everything in the superficial sense. Do not read, uh, do not read the ahadith, my dear brothers and sisters. Do not read the Quran in please know that for with with everything there is a bottom and that bottom has a bottom everything has a layer and that layer has a layer and inshallah we said of course that if you wish to go back to the hadith the hadith as well can be found translated in English and other languages as well if you just type on your Google search bar inshallah type um, the sermon of the Prophet delivered uh, at the end of Sha'ban or the sermon of the Prophet delivered at the end of the month of Ramadan or sorry, in the beginning of the month of Ramadan you'll find the sermon inshallah and I suggest that you keep the sermon with you so inshallah we'll discuss it because we will discuss line by line and we'll try our best to go I mean we're not into as much detail but just enough for you guys inshallah to have a more closer understanding of the words of the Prophet that First of all, you'll have a more more holistic understanding of the blessing that is the month of Ramadan. And second of all, you'll find how the words of the Prophet are deeper. as They're deeper than how they look on just reading it on a piece of paper or on your laptop or in a book. My dear brothers and sisters, with that, inshallah, we conclude our first episode. And I ask for your forgiveness, inshallah. Um, I'm trying my best uh, here to deliver as as best of content I can sometimes it's hard to do these recordings uh, when there's no audience but I, I'm I always when I'm doing this insha I'm, I'm doing this I'm thinking of all those inshallah ta'ala that will benefit from this my dear brothers and sisters I wish to thank you for taking this time it is because of you guys you out there my dear brothers and sisters you make this possible and I thank you from the bottom of my heart and inshallah you will have a fruitful journey during these nights of Ramadan and I say wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh <laughs>